Hello, my name is Eunchol Choi. I'm in University of Southern California, Annenberg School of Communication, and I'm a PhD student. And I'm really happy and honored to present here about our project on automated claim matching with large language models that can empower fact checkers in the fight against misinformation. I, that, I that conducted this project with my co-author and my advisor, Emilio Ferrara, so I thank him for that. Okay, misinformation is dangerous for society and public health overall. It's, uh, it uh, gives us significant threat to our society. So fact-checking is crucial in combating, it, uh, combating misinformation, but it is also very time-consuming, very res resource-intensive, and it is very challenging to just merely keep the pace with uh, rapidly spreading misinformation. So this brilliant report uh, published by Full Fact 2020 uh, reports on the fact checkers struggles on uh, fact checking and debunking misinformation online. So if you haven't uh, looked at it, I really recommend you to look at it because it's a really brilliant uh, resource for uh, people uh, researching fact checking and misinformation. <sighs> so our goal is to assist and augment the, these tasks of fact checkers that is uh, very burdened by the resource intensiveness of that fact checking task. So we should complement their uh, um, work rather than to replace their roles all, all together. So our goal is to enhance fact checkers' efficiency without compromising uh, pre-established journalistic principles and journalistic norms that are shared by the, uh, the journalists in the newsroom. So uh, these journalistic norms uh, consist of uh, such consist of norms such as non-partisanship, fairness, transparency, and so on. So before uh, introducing my framework, I will review the related work briefly. So fact-checking is about uh, finding claims from both offline and online and gather the evidences to make the verdict on e each of the claims. So fact checkers are repeatedly, repeatedly asking for detecting repeated or vital claims. If you look at this plot, yeah, the majority of the, uh, almost majority of the fact checkers that uh, replied in this survey from uh, full fact report 2020, 2020 uh, answered that they really need the AI tools for uh, metrics on virality and the tools for identifying previously checked claims to avoid re repetition in their uh, debunking task. But the important part is that Integrating these AI tools requires careful planning because uh, it shouldn't really uh, undermine the established journalistic practices and uh, norms. Uh, if uh, AI tools threat to replace those uh, pre-established journalistic norms, the chances are journalists tend to uh, uh, tend to shy away from using those AI tools and uh, very become become very uh, <clears throat> yeah they do not accept those kind of 
tools. So AI should augment, not replace fact checkers. Uh, so the framework and the concept of augmented intelligence, which means uh, com complementing the human insights without replacing them all together is very appealing to fact checkers. There, there are countless, countless variations when misinformation is shared online. Uh, when misinformation spreads, it creates really endless variations. And as you can see, most of the fact checkers, uh, when they uh, detected the claim from the uh, natural corpus, such as uh, online social media or uh, politician speech or any of the natural conversational or communication setting, when they publish their articles, news articles or fact check, uh, uh, fact checking uh, section, they nor regularize or normalize the text so that it can fit the format of simple claim, right? So in this example, it. It's very clean. It is a very clean version of this misinformation. Vaccinated people emit Bluetooth signals. But in the real world, uh, it is pro uh, propagated in really different versions of the claim. So some of the people attach uh, URLs that link to uh, misleading, misinf uh, misleading information and fact check, uh, fake news domains. Some of them attach hashtags, some of them uh, just post their thoughts and feelings about this claim and so on. So um, pre-existing misinformation detection uh, techniques usually depend on your uh, sampling based on URL or hashtags. Uh, don't get me wrong, these methods are very time efficient and uh, very, yeah, uh, works well on large corpus, but it is a very limited method because it, the social media posts that have any URLs or hashtags are actually a very small fraction of every post. So the challenge is to detect the misinformation, uh, de detect a post that mentions misinformation without your any URLs or hashtags. So how do we do this? The claim matching stage of the fact checking is matching the previously debunked claims by professional fact checkers with emerging claims from uh, natural uh, net, uh, corpus from natural communication setting. So this should uh, this should con uh, consider textual both textual and semantic similarities. And although this process can be ha uh, uh, can happen in each of the news organizations or fact checking organizations. This also can this task also can be collaborative, and when we use the claim data from shared platforms like Google Fact Check tools, where Google aggregate the results of fact checking within the same platform. So our framework, FactGPT. Uh, which is on automated claim matching, uh, empowers fact checkers because it, it can be used to avoid redundancy in verification process. Uh, when, for example, if they uh, learn that the emerging claim is already debunked by someone else, they would and there would their burden would be definitely be yeah lowered also for researchers analyzing misinformation from a large corpus could uh, it would be uh, this framework would be helpful for us because uh, 
we can detect misinformation from large corpus uh, that doesn't have URLs or uh, hashtags on it, but that has that misinformation uh, part. Also, online it can possibly be facilitated by online platforms and moderating contents. So primarily it empowers fact checkers while keeping human oversight that complies with uh, augmented intelligence framework. So I'll briefly introduce the task and data collection. So I, we used textual entailment or natural language infer inference to evaluate LLM's performance and claim matching tasks. So textual entailment is a everyday reasoning task on pairwise relationship between two texts, two claims. In our case, uh, claims that are debunked by fact checkers, false claims that are debunked by fact checkers, and also the real life posts. So in this case, when a large language model can excel in this textual entailment task, we can assure that it can it also works well on claim matching because if a tweet entails a false claim that was already debunked, it is basically repeating the same misinformation. So you know, it, it, we can match the claims between the two. We collected 1,225 debunked claims from Google Fact Check tools and PolitiFact that were already uh, fact checked by pro professional fact checkers. We filtered those that only had text and also we filter those that has clear label as false by these one of the platforms. So we used the claims between 2020 and 2021, and we limited our context to COVID-19. So you could see that, yeah, it, <laughs> it, sim it follows the similar pattern of the COVID-19 outbreak. And then we created test data asset uh, so we paired uh, tweets uh, on Twitter with claims so that we could have 12, uh, 1,225 claim and tweet pairs based on talk token and semantic similarity. So we filtered uh, uh, tweets uh, in regard, uh, regarding the claims based on BM25 for token similarity and sentence bird embedding cosine similarity for semantic simil uh, cosine similarity for semantic similarity. After pairing these tweets and claims, we uh, used mechanical uh, Amazon Mechanical Turk to classify the each of the pairs into either entailment, neutral, or contradiction. So entailment being if the tweet is true, claim is also true. So basically matching. Contradiction is when tweet is true, claim is false. So it is. it can be seen as some form of rebuttal or counter response or yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah, counter response and neutral which is when tweet and claim is not related to one another. We used majority vote scheme for the uh, final label data set, created test data set that contains entailment, neutral, and contradiction labels to each of the pairs. 
So with this uh, test set, I'll it, I'll summarize our and I'll summarize our experimental setting. So first, we experimented on pre-trained lamps on test set. So uh, to set the baselines and assess the pre-trained language models as capabilities on claim matching task. We experimented with different prompt styles, zero shot, zero shot chain of thought, few shot, few shot chain of thought, and we experimented with different large language models varying in size and, and varying in size and architecture. Also for the second part of the experimental setting, we fine-tuned uh, smaller models based on the training set. We, for the training set, based on the debunked claims by professional fact-checkers, we generated synthetic training data using LLMs, larger LLMs, to create balanced data set. So, that we could have the, for each of the debunked claims, we have the synthesized tweets that entails or contradicts or is neutral to the original claim. So I've, uh, we fine-tuned on this training data set and uh, have the smaller fine-tuned GPT annotate the relationship between the tweet claim pairs and test set. So in sum, we have two experiment settings, one on pre-trained models and one on LLMs fine-tuned on synthetic data. I'll share the results. For the first experiment, no single model actually excels across all prompt styles. So when you see the plot on the left, uh, Lama 270B performs well on precision. And when you look at the right plot, you can see that GPT-4 performs well on recall. So there's no model that excels across all performance metrics. And also you can see that gains were very inconsistent and varying from prompt styles by prompt styles, which indicates that uh, the, we need nuanced approach for optimal performance. For the fine tuning smaller models on generated sets, it could rival larger and pre-trained counterparts. When you look at the blue, uh, blue bars of the plot, and those indicate the models GPT 3.5 Turbo, Lama 2 13B and 7B trained on GPT 4 generated synthetic training set. So in this case, uh, you can see that uh, mo all of the lar uh, l smaller language models show the better performance when fine-tuned on GPT-4 generated sets. So, and although not in, on this plot, the performance uh, stayed pretty much the same for the imbalanced training set. So at least for this uh, experimental setting, we could say that uh, the quality and, uh, of the training data set is more important in terms of performance than the uh, different size or architecture of the large language models fine-tuned. Also, we monitored the, the training validation loss and performance on test set over the training epoch. 
we could also see that in the left side of the plot, uh, it showed more stead stability in terms of performance on test set when compared to the model uh, models fine-tuned on training set that is generated on different models. So it shows that with better uh, curated, uh, better curated, better quality training data, the fine-tuning process shows resilience and reliability. So for the key takeaways, we showed the, the potential for large language models to augment the fact-checking work, workflow. So we could, uh, we could see that uh, large language models can mm, augment fact-checkers' work process by reliably matching the claims between uh, the emerging claims and the tweets following so that it bolsters human decision making with informed AI recommendations. Also, the properly fine-tuned smaller large language models can perform compa comparably to larger proprietary models so that it offers more accessible and efficient AI solutions. Also, continued research and responsible AI development can empower fact-checkers to counter misinformation and scale. So collaboration among researchers, developers, and fact-checkers is very crucial to maximize benefits and mitigate the risks following. Uh, thank you for your attention and me and my advisor, Emilio Ferrara, would like to acknowledge the support from DARPA. This, this work was uh, partially in, supported in part by DARPA. I would also like to invite you to explore our code and data sets, also the paper in the companion proceeding. And the code and data set is also available on GitHub. We look forward to your question and feedback. Thank you.